Hey guys, Cody Baramani here with the Eastwood Company. Today we're going to talk about the MiG-175 and just how versatile it is. If you're looking for one machine to do it all, this is the one. It's perfect for auto restoration because you can weld anything from thin sheet metal up to 5 16 plate. If you put some O23 wire in, you can hang a quarter, fix your floor pan, or you put some O35 wire in and you can work on your chassis, weld tabs on a rear axle, you can do just about anything with this machine. Plus, it comes with a spool gun for welding aluminum. So you can do some curb rash repair on an aluminum wheel or weld a tab back on a transmission. We've had the opportunity to refine this machine over the last 10 years, and it is the best possible welder for the DIY enthusiast. After we review the machine, we're going to set it up, weld some steel and aluminum, and let you guys see the results. Inside our MiG-175, you'll find our high-quality virgin copper wound transformer. You can see it right here. You'll also see that the lamination stack is welded instead of pressed. This is going to ensure that no voids come or develop over years. This is the rectifier that you'll find inside the machine. It's got a nice aluminum heat sink to dissipate heat and ensure that it'll last for years to come. And you'll also see our new and improved metal drive motor. This is designed to give a nice, smooth, consistent wire feed which is going to translate into a nice, smooth, consistent weld. Also being metal, it's more durable, and it's going to give you years and years of service. Outside the machine, you'll find an industry standard Tweco style torch. This torch takes common consumables that are always available at eastwood.com, but are also available at welding supply shops across the country. That's great if you're doing a project on a Saturday night, you run out of tips, and you want to get the job done. The MiG-175 has infinitely variable wire speed and heat settings. This is much better than the old tap style transformer where you may have four or five heat settings and it really allows you to dial in your weld. That's helpful for both the beginner and the pro. Weld thin sheet metal with O23 wire and the heat down low or weld very heavy 5 16 plate with O35 wire and this thing cranked. Now that we've talked about the MiG-175, let's get it set up and ready to weld. Insert the brass body of the torch lead through the front of the machine and then tighten the torch tensioner. Then connect the metal plug for the torch trigger into the front of the machine. The ground lead connection gets run through the front of the machine then up the wire loom on the back side of the panel. This secures the ground wire inside the machine. Attach the ground terminal by using the black knob. Always make sure to flip the switch inside the machine to the welding gun position. Now, let's install the wire spool. First, remove the wing nut, the spacer, and the plastic adapter. You're going to set the plastic adapter aside because that's only used with 8 inch spools. Then, install the wire spool in the shaft, followed by the spacer, and then the wing nut. Set the tension on the wire by tightening the wing nut until there's just a little bit of resistance. Feed the wire into the drive motor and over the roller. Then into the torch hole. Drop the rocker arm down and lift up the pressure adjuster to lock that wire into place. If this is the first time you're setting up a MIG welder in your shop, then you'll need to get a bottle of welding gas. When welding mild steel, you need to have a 75% argon, 25% CO2 bottle. Attach the provided gas regulator to your bottle and tighten it down. Using the provided gas line, attach one end to the regulator and the other end to the back of the machine. Here's a tech tip. These are brass fittings, so don't over tighten the connections. You also won't need Teflon tape. You need to set the gas flow of the machine at the gas regulator. With the machine on, pull the trigger and turn the adjustment knob until it reaches 20 CFH. This is a good baseline for your gas flow. Lastly, we need to run wire through the torch so we can start welding. Remove both the nozzle on the torch and the contact tip. This helps the wire run through the lead without getting stuck. Pull the torch trigger to feed the wire and once your wire is through the torch, replace your contact tip and the nozzle. You're now ready to weld. Now that we're all set up to weld, let's try this machine out on some 3 16 steel plate. Using the chart inside, select the metal, wire size, and material thickness of what you're welding to determine some base settings for your welder. Remember, these settings are just guidelines and you may need to adjust to your preference. To get started welding, Place the torch about 90 degrees from your workpiece and then tilt the torch about 10 to 15 degrees. Push while making small cursive ease. 
There are a few other techniques to MIG weld, but this is a great place to get started. All right guys, now that we're finished up welding our steel plate, let's switch the MIG-175 over so it can weld aluminum. In order to weld aluminum, you have to use a spool gun. You need to use that spool gun because aluminum MIG wire, it's very flexible and it kinks easily. And it just does not have the rigidity that steel wire does. So that's why you can't run it through this MIG torch liner and you have to use a spool gun. Let's get the spool gun installed and all set up. Let's try it out on some aluminum plate. To set up the spool gun, you need to open the side of the machine to get to the drive motor. Then, cut the wire at the spool and use one of the provided holes in the spool to secure the wire so it does not unwind. Remove the standard welding torch and its connector from the machine. Then, insert the brass body of the spool gun into the front of the welder and tighten down the torch tensioner wing nut. Finally, connect the torch connector back on the front of the machine. To thread new wire into the spool gun, remove the plastic cover so you can get to the wire. Cut the bent end off the wire, loosen the brass tensioner thumb screw so you can feed the wire through the drive roller grooves. Keep feeding the wire until it is past the drive rollers and into the wire inlet. Then tighten the brass tensioner screw until there is light pressure on the wire. Remove the nozzle and the contact tip on the spool gun to prevent any snags. Turn the machine on and pull the trigger. This will feed the wire the rest of the way through the gun. Finally, replace the contact tip in the nozzle and you're ready to go. Make sure when you're switching your machine over to weld aluminum, you also switch your gas to 100% argon. Then set the gas flow at about 25 CFH. When welding with the spool gun, we recommend running a little more stick out, pushing the weld and using a step and pause technique. This will help you get the best results possible. All right, guys, so you've seen it weld steel, you've seen it weld aluminum, you know this thing works. If you're looking to do thin sheet metal, the heavy 5 16 plate, or even that aluminum, this welder's gonna get the job done. It's perfect for automotive restoration. We also back this thing by a three-year warranty, and we're gonna stand behind our product. If you're looking for the perfect welder for automotive restoration, click the link and visit eastwood.com.